name's Glass. Shoot. Wait, right? Mm-hmm. Wait. No, it's... First name, Mr. <laughs> it's first name, okay. Mr. Gotcha. Last name. Glass. Yeah. yeah. First name, Mr. Last name. Hey, it's Glass. It's the movie that we all saw. It's the greatest movie of 2019. <laughs> Come Look on. Out. Look out, because Mr. Whistles is coming for you. <laughs> you know how it is. It's it's the cinema transmission uh, with your hosts, Joey. That's me. And uh, this guy. Mr. Whistle. <laughs> Mr. Whistle, Nathan. Nathan. And uh, Nathaniel Nathan- Mr. Whistle Jones. That's me, Nathaniel Mr. Yay! Everybody give it up. Go on. Yep. You clap. I, don't, I want to hear you clap. I don't care if you guys are listening to this in a library. You better be given a round of applause. Stand to, up. To the Stand man. up and clap. Citizen Kane style. But we both saw Glass. And uh, yeah. we both promised each other before uh, recording this that we wouldn't tell each other what we thought about it. Yeah. So, so we're going into this conversation fresh. Yes, and I I have a sneaking suspicion. I think I know Joey's opinion on it, but are you sure about that? But I don't know about it. So, what I'm going to say is, I actually enjoyed this movie. Well, let me go ahead and before well, you can continue if you have more to say, but before I I give my thoughts, I want to like kind of go back a little bit. Okay. Uh, well, I just wanted to say I I enjoyed it for what it was and. Uh, if we want to talk about a little bit of like the critical reception, mm-hmm. um, I, I literally did not understand the the backlash on mm-hmm. it. And uh, even if you didn't like the film, which I know you're going to get into uh, whether or not you liked it, but I I don't I literally think it's an okay film regardless of whether or not you like it. Um, so I I don't understand the critical response to this. I think the audience is actually a little bit more on the nose with it, with their, you know kind of a positive response like. It's it's not anything super special, but uh, anyway, Joey, what do you what do you want to say about it? All right. So I I first saw Unbreakable just the like a couple days before Glass even came out. Yeah. So you know it was one that I've been like, oh man, still need to see that. And then I was like, Glass got announced after Split, and then I was like, yeah, I still gotta see that one. And then it finally got down to where. Glass was about to come out, and I still hadn't seen it, so I was just like, I gotta gotta watch this fucking movie already. And uh, I did, and I loved it. Excellent. I loved Unbreakable. And um, Yeah, Unbreakable's fantastic. I think it's one of his best, I think, if not my favorite Shyamalan movie. Yeah, I think it might be the first one of his that I can recall that I, like, really just, like, came away from, just being like, yeah, I, I loved that movie a lot. Um... It, feel, it does not even... It feels like it was so ahead of its time, too. Oh, yeah, way before all the... Yeah, considering, like, what, you know, how huge superheroes would become and how much a part of our culture they would be. Uh, just watching that movie now without ever seeing it before, it was like... Yeah, it was... Uh, I thought it was brilliant. And uh, I loved pretty much everything about it, about it. From its sort of muted color palette to just how... How sad and dreary it yeah, was. It's grounded too. It's, yeah, it's definitely one of those more grounded superhero films yeah. that, like, you know, you don't really know if he's doing the things he's doing. Yeah. Like, is he imagining this? Is Bruce Willis, you know, actually this, you know, superhuman that survived this train accident? Right. Yeah. It so. kind of it <clears throat> has like an internal debate going on, and then it introduces Elijah, and he adds even more complications to what. David's dealing with and it kind of to me that movie is like an argument for why it's a good thing that super is in real life <laughs> sure yeah no absolutely <laughs> yeah. and Elijah is actually a little bit more sympathetic yeah. in, in the, his role yeah. so so yeah going after watching Unbreakable I was like okay now I'm like ex- I'm so excited to, to see Glass after knowing like what that movie is and how it has split tying into it which i saw when it came out in theaters it's a pretty good movie yeah it's really good i wish i could have uh, watched it again before uh before i saw glass but i wasn't really able to but which was fine because it it was only it's only been like a couple years since that came out so i re- it's still pretty fresh in my mind 
But yeah. Um, Glass fucking rules. Oh, sweet. I'm, I love, I'm really I, happy that Joey uh, went against what I was thinking he would say. Yeah, I fucking loved it, man. Yeah, it was a really fun movie. Yeah, it was. And the things that the sort of deconstructive stuff that M. Night was doing in Unbreakable, he, like, I felt that he continued those same ideas, but he made he just continued to really delve even deeper into them, especially with introducing Kevin into it and giving James McAvoy even more to do with the oh, yeah. character and involving him with this sort of idea that it all all like the idea of being a superhero in the real world might just be just this thing that they created in their own minds yeah, and isn't even a real thing something that like made them all believe that they were special could just be like this lie and this fabrication and i always thought uh, i thought it was interesting there are, are some things about the movie that i didn't care for particularly but i think the like the good outweigh the bad mm-hmm. um you know I, one on one hand i, I really liked anna taylor joy's character she had like some yeah. kind of version of stockholm syndrome uh, it looked like it seemed like she had a little. She added more character to you know, like you said, Kevin, yeah. and just uh, all of the different personalities. Ha- half of them really like her. Mm-hmm. Like even like the Beast is okay with her yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because she's she's somebody that shows him some empathy, even though like Kevin's a lot to deal with. Obviously, she was able to sort of understand him and show him some genuine like compassion in a way. She was I, able to get through to his center. But I, I think uh, all of the supporting cast members, at least, uh, with um, you had Bruce Willis's son. I thought he was maybe one of the weaker points. Yeah, but um, I thought it was really, really cool that he came back to do it, though. Yeah, absolutely. Because yes. I, I don't think I've really seen that dude in anything else that I can no. think of. But it, it, but it, then again, it was another another kind of like kind of middle of the road um, was uh, Elijah's mom, mm-hmm. who I thought was was good, but it you know. Those characters definitely were necessary yeah. to get to the depth of each of those characters that, you know, obviously you have that, um, that dichotomy, you know, going into watching the glass, you're like, you're thinking, okay, Bruce Willis is the good guy. Um, the Beast and Mr. Glass, Elijah are, are on one team where, you know, Mr. Glass is obviously like the mastermind behind it all. So it's like that good and evil dichotomy. Mm-hmm. However, <clears throat> there are parts, and it, just like, you know, Joey was talking about in Unbreakable, Bruce Willis cheats on his wife and like has, you know, has, you know, consequences. He's not perfect. He's not a good guy. Like he's got, you know, some, some depth to him too. He's done some bad things, Mm -hmm. but he's just trying to, you know, work that throughout that out. And I, I like how with each of those supporting characters, they, they delve deeper into uh, both Elijah and Kevin's characters, showing them that they're, they're, they're more than just evil beings. Yeah, and you know, all everybody in that that you know movie has a lot of you know different fleshed out things about them. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I did a lot. It's definitely not perfect, but no. it was just like it was just really thrilling to see you know to see that world brought back to to now, and. Uh, you know, the opening act of this movie basically gives you exactly that. Just a split and unbreakable coming together and sort of those two threads like inner. Just like a couple weeks after split. Like literally yeah. it picks up right after yeah. the events of what split happened. Yeah, and just like that whole like kind of world building that that does and how it brings those characters together is really awesome to see. Especially, you know, considering that Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson haven't played these characters in almost twenty years. Yeah. So, and did you know about the the deleted scenes from Unbreakable that they put in to Glass? I believe so. Yeah, a lot of uh, some of the some of the scenes. Obviously, we're not getting into spoiler territory for anyone who's listening because right. we want you to watch the film. Obviously, because you know, in my Shyamalan, he's got twists. Um, where's my slide whistle for that one? Uh oh, <laughs> twists. But uh, Mr. I, Whistles. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Whistle. Uh, but I, I, I did not know that a lot of, uh, there was some stock footage because, you know, there's a couple times where you, they have flashbacks with Bruce Willis. Um, he's got, you know, he looks a lot younger. I'm like, oh, they must yeah. have put a lot of money into that. No, actually that was actual 
deleted scenes from the original movie Unbre- Unbreakable. So it's like that's really cool. Yeah. How they incorporated that. Yeah. So I I, I give M. I. Chalman props for coming back strong from you know those four movies of yeah. like Lee. Yeah, where he really plummeted, and he just kind of <clears throat> he kind of revitalized himself by by going backwards a little bit, and uh, furthering his own sort of worlds that he made. And, um, you know, again, without really giving anything away, because this movie is still obviously pretty new, um, I would love, I, I just really love this world and, like, kind of the ideas that he's playing around with and about superheroes and about them uh, existing in the world and why it's a good and bad thing and the debate at the center of that. And I... I I would personally just love it if uh, he continued to make movies about that and like sure. kind of set in this world, but I don't really know if that would happen. Yeah, considering that uh, the way it does end is kind of on a it's trilogy. A, yeah, it's kind a, of a thing. It's yeah, it feels like it's uh, you know climactic for that. And it's, that's the thing that we're I, I have a struggle too. I, I I do I would like to see more of it, but at the same time, I kind of feel like it's it, it's a good note to end on too. You know, I mm-hmm. feel like it's, you know, that's maybe just what I wanted, you know, and just right. keep it that way and keep it all nice and neat. But yeah. who knows? We'll see. We'll see where he goes with that. Right. He might just move on to another project, which yeah. is definitely and, uh, a possibility. I'm more excited about that than I was <clears throat> uh, a few years ago. That's oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he really uh, made a comeback. So uh, moving on from there. Also, you... I just wanted to say that Sarah Paulson's Ooh. great in it, too. Sarah Paulson, yes, as a site. All right, so moving on from there, you want to talk a little bit about it's the award seasons are, are finally you know coming. The big ones are coming now, uh-oh. and uh oh, now we are to the <laughs> the Academy that. Awards. Grabs whistle. Uh-oh. Grabs the whistle. Here we go. Here it comes. Look out. <laughs> hey. We are talking a little bit. We don't want to really talk too much about it because we want to talk a little bit more about another um, award ceremony. But we're talking about the 91st Academy Awards. 91. It's the 91st. Mm. It's a long time. Maybe when they get to 100, they'll finally just end it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I, yeah, I can tell that Joey loves this <laughs> already. Just put us all out of our misery. Put it out of our misery. So I was thinking we could talk about at least like maybe... A few of the the different categories that we yeah. want to talk about. Might as Any well. particular one you want to start off with? Uh, I mean, I guess we can just kind of talk about. Uh, eat any of them? <laughs> Honestly, any of them. Okay. Well, you want to start with the good news <clears throat> first? Sure. If I mean, there's not a whole lot, but. Uh, I'll start off with something that I, you know, is something that usually I think this is actually a category that usually is pretty 100% guaranteed. Uh-huh. Um, but I think this year is going to be an upset. And this is the animated feature film. Okay. Usually I think Disney Pixar always dominates this, yeah. this, this spot. That's always, true. always, always, always. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, like, uh. Last year was Coco, right? Yeah, last year was Coco. And the year before that was Moana. Yeah, and, and they like beat uh, Kubo and the Two Strings and yeah. things that I think are way better films yeah. or like Loving Vincent, things that I think are actually really groundbreaking in animated sure, styles. Sure. Um, now this is a film that I think is, to me at least, I think was going to win um, because it won the Golden Globe, and that is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. And I actually am really excited about this because this movie was great. Yeah, I actually, uh, I didn't tell you this earlier, but I actually just saw it again <clears throat> yesterday, and uh, yeah, it doesn't get old at all. It's uh, it's so good. Love it. So I, I honestly think, you know, um, the other movies that are, I think, up against it really are Incredibles 2, really, I think is the only other one that probably has any chance of getting near yeah. it. Uh, maybe Ralph Breaks the Internet, but um, then there's Isle of Dogs and then uh, Mirai. Is that uh, if I'm saying that right? I think so. Um, Isle of Dogs was fine. It wasn't really groundbreaking. Uh, definitely, I think, a little inferior to Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. there. Uh, it had less of a, like, a. I don't know if people out there agree with that, but it just did, it doesn't have, like, the usual warmth that a Wes Anderson film does. It felt a little safe. Yeah, it too. felt safe, and it felt like the characters just 
didn't really draw you in much at all. No. Which is weird because I love dogs. And, uh, you, you know, dogs Isle are actually... Dogs. I love dogs. I love dogs. It's Isle. funny. <laughs> you did it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I did. Crap. Well, um... <clears throat> but anyway, yes, I think Spider-Man actually is going to win this one because, which yeah. is really in, is really nice and is really refreshing because this is definitely one of the categories that needs to have refurbishing yeah. done to it because, like I said, it's just always dominated yeah. by and, Disney uh, Pixar. It's a great fucking movie. It deserves it. Okay. Other than that, um, I think we can probably talk about um, maybe want to talk about foreign language film maybe sure. for a second, even though we haven't seen some of them. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's like I would consider to be a pretty glaring omission is, uh, even though I've not seen it yet, uh, Burning is not here. Yeah, I I would say over possibly Capernaum, which I think is from the Middle East. I can't remember exactly which country. Yeah, but I, I can understand where the diversity comes in, mm-hmm. where they want to have different you know uh, demographics represented in the foreign language category. Okay. So, but yeah, Burning, I yeah, like I, that that movie was like a. You know, it was kind of all the rage for a little while there. It's kind of on fire, if uh, you will. Maybe, yeah, I, maybe, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> it broke me there for a second. <laughs> but I, I, there's there's a couple things here that I... I mean, we haven't seen Cold War yet either. And right. that movie's coming near us as well. And that one has actually... I'm actually really impressed. It's in several other categories. Yeah. And that's really that's really awesome because yeah. um, from what you've told me and and Ida, uh, that is it Pawlowski, Pawlowski, Pavel Pawlowski, Pawlowski, uh, Polish director. Um, I'm just really excited to dive into this this guy's filmography. Yeah, and so uh, I can't wait to watch this movie. And uh, but the other ones that we have seen, at least you've seen Shoplifters. That's right. Shoplifters is there, which and, is very good. And then Roma, which is probably the one that's going to win this at least this category yeah it would make sense because it's nominated for best picture as well yeah so, i mean that's kind of that's what happened with the more a few years ago with the oh yes it was nominated for best yeah. picture and foreign language film and it obviously won the foreign language that. yeah so I, I think it's yeah since roma's in both categories it's you know and obviously it's it's well deserved because this is one of the more more personal uh alfonso Cuarón films yeah. that we've t- we talked about in the last podcast we mm-hmm. we raved about it we both love the film yeah it's um great. I honestly, you, I do see it winning the best foreign language here. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's quite a few things here, and also Never Look Away is another film that was here. This is the guy who made um, uh, the director from Germany who made. Uh, why am I, why am I blanking? I literally just watched this film. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no. Uh, oh crap! <laughs> Stall the audience while I think. Uh, everybody. Um... I don't know how to stall an audience, man. Sorry. <laughs> well, now I'm looking at the audience. Looking it up. One. Obviously, I I have to look this up for some reason on the old internet. This is what we do when we are Florian com- Hankel von Donnerschmark. Yes, it's that a good is, name. That's a very long. The German lives name. of others. The lives of others. Yes, I have there recently saw this movie. This is a that was a fantastic film, and I finally was able to see that movie. So this is the same director. Uh, that Joey just said, Florian, Florian Henkel, Henkel von, von Donnerschmark. Donnerschmark. Really long name. So He also directed The Tourist. Ah, which I have not seen, and I don't really know if I want ah. to. But those are the nominations for that. Uh, we both think Roma's probably going to win that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next, do you want to just talk about um, just the actors and maybe the best picture? Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, so... Let's see. For let's just do actor and supporting role. Or no, sorry, Blah. we're on the wrong spot. For some reason, this place that we're at is just all over the place. Fucking CNN. CNN. Why? Why do you? Why do, you, why do, you, right. do, why do you do that to me? Name drop yeah. them. CNN Entertainment. So yeah. actor in a leading role. So who we have here? We have Christian Bale, obviously for Vice. Bradley Cooper for A Star Is Born. Willem Dafoe for At Eternity's Gate. Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody and Viggo Morganson for Green Book. What do you think? Who do you want to win? Uh, I should actually ask first. Well, I mean, 
I don't think this was a, like a particularly amazing year for lead actors. I don't. Uh, yeah, I agree. There's a um, couple in my in my periphery. At least what I think the Academy will pick. Yeah, I have not seen At Eternity's Gate. I do love Willem I Dafoe have though. Seen that film. He's it's... probably like my favorite actor right currently working right now. And he's he's a brilliant uh, brilliant in that film, yeah. uh, playing the you know the lives uh, the life <laughs> the lives he's got. <laughs> Playing the different He's lives. Got nine lives. Oh, Some shoot. Fucking cat, baby. Just, you know, playing Vincent Van Gogh in that film. It, he, he did phenomenal work. Um, and then I watched Aquaman the same damn day, which is really funny. He and should I, have been nominated for that shit. He rides a <laughs> hammerhead shark and he's got a top knot. Come on. Come on. Willem Dafoe for Aquaman. Best picture. It's actor. not too late. <laughs> it's not, it's too, not late. too late. It's, you could consider him. Put, put him in there. Um, so. What are you thinking then, I guess? I think I think Bradley Cooper is who I would want to see win. He's kind of I the only... I think I'm the same way. On based that. on those choices and what I actually have seen, it's kind of the only good choice. <laughs> sure. I, I, like I said, I have not seen At Eternity's Gate. I'm glad that Willem Dafoe is nominated for that. Yeah, it's a really interesting... Because uh, out of the other, the other four are kind of obvious i feel like at least we're just yeah. kind of but that one is good for him to be there because that's the only one at attorney's gate actually even got on the oscars just period mm-hmm. so um i am i'm in agreement with joey i think bradley cooper is the one i think i like the most out of all of it. i've seen all these movies um next person i would say who i actually think is going to win is rami malek for bohemian rhapsody which is i think the only thing that this movie deserves really is him winning that, and that's maybe it. Um, and I, Joey might disagree with that. Yeah, <laughs> based on that. Um, but I mean, Don't the get other me started. The other the other choice is Christian Bale. I mean, which is uh, once again, uh, but both Joey and I we talked about it last time. We didn't really yeah. care for Vice, but uh, big fans of that. But one. Christian Bale did a good job, and um, he definitely uh, is definitely. You know, was put up there for a nomination, and you can clearly tell it's kind of like last year's with um, Darkest Hour. You had right, which I I thought was way better. Obviously, yeah, I love that movie. Anyway, I love Joe Wright, so that's just personal love. But. Yeah, Darkest Hour is good. But anyway, yeah, this is a, kind of a lackluster actor in the leading role. Yeah, it's not very strong. It's kind of a kind of wimpy. I guess. <laughs> and honestly, with, and we have Vigo. Um, and I honestly think Mahershala is way better than Vigo, at least in this particular role. Yeah. I, and so... Yeah. <clears throat> and he's in the actor and supporting uh, role, and that's who I think is going to win that, but we're not getting into that. So, last two categories we'll talk about. Actress in a leading role, we have Elitza Aparicio. I probably butchered that. Aparicito. Aparicio. 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 Yeah. Anyway, for Roma... <laughs> I don't know. I thought there was a T in there. <laughs> Glenn Close for The Wife, Lady Gaga for A Star Is Born, Olivia Coleman for The Favorite, and then Melissa McCarthy for Can You Ever Forgive Me? Now, this is actually a lot more of a tight race, I think so, than the best actor. Sure, yeah. Um, I really uh, love that uh, Yalitza is in this. Yeah, I am I, too. Because she was just phenomenal in this film. Yeah. Such a broad range of, uh, you know, being terrified, being mm-hmm. emboldened. Uh, just so many different moments in that in that film where yeah. I can tell she she stuck out. Yeah, she she really goes through a lot as a performer in that film. She really does a great job. And the other thing I'm really happy to see, and I, both Joey and I watched this uh, together, was Melissa McCarthy and Can You Ever Forgive Me? Yeah, it's a, that's a great movie. That's one that's one that I I kind of wish people are, watched a little bit. Yeah, more more, more people watched, and I am. I'm pleasantly surprised that it, it ended up getting, you know, some pretty, some pretty decent uh, accolades with the Oscars this year. I'm really happy that Richard E. Grant got a supporting actor nomination as well. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, both both him and <clears throat> Melissa McCarthy were great. And and can you ever forgive me? Which is really strange because McCarthy got such a weird track record that we don't really care for her films. Yeah, usually not, yeah. Um, and so this one came, you know, kind of, <clears throat> at least to me, was kind of like the um, Punch Drunk Love for Adam Sandler or kind of the um, Eternal, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind for Jim Carrey. 
it, that's what it kind of reminds me of. At least this is a more serious role for an actress who doesn't normally play a role like this at all. Yeah. Like, even close. So I, th- I thought that was a really good nod. But <clears throat> besides that, I think this is kind of between Lady Gaga and Olivia Colman. Honestly, I, I think this uh, Lady Gaga has been pushed a lot mm-hmm. on this and is definitely a favorite for a lot of people. Yeah. But Olivia Colman is the one who won at the the Golden Globes for yeah for and de- deservingly so she did phenomenal in that movie right as did you know Emma Stone and Rachel Wise who which, are which uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me that they're in the supporting category sure because they're, they're all played equal they're, parts yeah they're all in the movie for the same <clears throat> amount of time maybe even more than Olivia Coleman oh yeah Emma Stone for sure yeah she's definitely the most and then I would say it's probably Rachel Wise a little bit more than Olivia. Yeah, honestly. See, I, it doesn't really make sense at all. But but she's the queen, so I suppose there's that. But she did she, she did great. Um, and honestly, that's honestly I think who's going to win, Olivia. Yeah, for that for would, for the the Oscars themselves. Yeah, that think. would be uh, I think who I would most want to see win. Um, although I would be very happy if uh, Elisa wins as well. Yeah, I did. I'm really happy she's there. All right, so uh, well. You know what? Let's talk about director for a second because okay. we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about um, the best picture. So, director, we had Spike Lee for Black Klansman, Paolo 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 <laughs> Koski. I did it again. <laughs> Paolo Paolo. But for Cold War, which we uh, mentioned earlier, Yorgos Lothamos, which I could pronounce, uh, for the favorite, that Greek man. Uh, Alfonso Caron for Roma and Adam McKay for Vice. You know, mm. I actually really like how we have a, a pretty diverse lineup there of different people from, you know, obviously probably on purpose, but um, these are all fairly good movies. Yeah. Except for maybe one, obviously. Obviously, we haven't seen Cold War yet, but these are interesting picks. Yeah, I mean, could be better still. But sure. <laughs> at least, you know, at least Peter Farrelly or fucking Brian Singer is in there. Absolutely. Yeah, true. True. <laughs> After all, all the stuff Brian Singer is going to get. Yeah. Because that's literally, I think that's going to I mean, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if they put him in here at this point, but, you know. Oh, well, they're, I think that's good. that whole news is going to tank all Bohemian Rhapsody's steam. Which is good to Which, me. <laughs> sure. Sure. Because, I mean, they shouldn't, that movie, because of the fact that that fucking guy directed it shouldn't have gotten all these accolades at all sure especially considering the fact that the movie's not very good either the movie's i i I, well yes and i I think the movie's fine i I maybe differ a little bit for joey i I think the movie's enjoyable and i i i like queen a lot and so and i know that's the movie queen wanted to make at least you know with uh, in memory of freddy maybe it's not perfect it's definitely a serviceable movie but um, anyway, uh, with that being said, uh, I think that the Academy is going to pick Spike Lee for this. That's or, a bold choice. Yes. Um, well, I know that the Academy loves Alfonso because Gravity won right. years ago. But I think Roma is going to win in a lot of other categories. Now, obviously, I'm one of those people who I think always goes for the... I think that most movies should win different categories instead of one Just sweeping. One, yeah. Which is not always the case. Right. Which I agree with that. I think that's a I think that's a better approach. Yeah. And so I you know, in, in at least in, in my eyes I think it would be um, nicer, uh, if most well, not nicer I guess. It just make more sense to like not, you know, say all of this is goes to this one particular film. Yeah, that's that makes it less exciting to even like as a viewer, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I like Black Clans, uh, Black Klansman as their as a choice here because I think Spike Lee did a fantastic job with that movie. Oh yeah, and so <clears throat> out of all that, I, the rest of them, um, you know, yeah, some of them are really good. So I um, I think that Alfonso will win. I don't think that um, the fact that you know that Roma will still win a bunch of other things, but. That, that's happened in the past where, like, you know, one movie ends up sweeping a whole bunch of stuff. So I don't really think much will change sure. in that regard. But we have seen quite a few changes in the Oscars in these last couple of years. At least they're a little bit they're a little bit more aware of social 
um, cues and and things like that. But yeah, obviously they try. They're, they're, they try. They try. All right, so let's talk about the pitiful best picture mm-hmm. uh, race because at least three of these movies don't really belong here. So at least in my book, um, oh, my yeah. green book. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, I'm kidding. So the best picture nominations are Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, A Star Is Born, and Vice. This is a pretty pitiful group here, I think. Yeah. There's there's quite a few good ones on here, like Roma, A uh, Star Is Born, uh, to me Green Book, and The Favorite, and even Black Klansman. But the ones that I omitted. Uh, one of them is a really good movie, but I don't think it deserves to be on the best picture list. And I know it's controversial. That's Black Panther for me. Uh, I think Avengers Infinity War is actually a better film. And if you really want to put something for Black Panther, I know what they're going for there. Um, Bill Street Could Talk was, is a much, much better representation, in my opinion, of uh, that category, if that's what they're going for. But I, uh, I get the cultural I, zeitgeist there. I mean, I like I like that Black Panther's there. It, uh, sure. I mean, it's kind of an odd choice, but I think it's cool. Um, but um, I will say that uh, it is kind of pitiful that uh, if Bill Street could talk isn't on there either. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> it's well, especially <clears throat> considering that usually there's nine Best Picture nominees, and this year's there's only eight. Yeah. So that doesn't really make much sense to me at all. It is strange that 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 is one of the omissions because this is we're talking about a guy who won Best Picture for Moonlight, yeah. and so and Beale Street could talk. I I would argue is actually better than Moonlight, just a little bit. I mean, obviously they're very different films. Yeah, but you know, it's on the same level as Moonlight is what I'm. I, I guess I'm getting at. Yeah, and, they're both. <clears throat> they're both incredible, but. Um, besides that, uh, the two movies that I kind of didn't, I kind of didn't really mention was Vice and Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Which are movies we really didn't care for that much. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I have a, a very powerful disdain for Vice. And, uh, like I kind of mentioned earlier, I have a very powerful disdain for Bohemian Rhapsody as well. Sure. <laughs> See, like I, I view Bohemian as like a just enjoyable movie, but I don't think it deserves the best picture nomination. Um, and definitely not vice at all and yeah. so but i honestly think this is a fairly good race for i think green book or a star is born or roma are, are probably the ones that are going to win here i think the two that this is kind of it's kind of similar to last year for me because last year there were two front runners for best picture and they were Three billboards in the shape of water. Shape of water, yeah. And uh, I, I'm not really a huge fan of three billboards, so at that time I was just like really hoping that the shape of water would take it. Mm-hmm. Even though there were much better films nominated for best picture that year that I would have rather seen, like Call Me by Your Name. Yeah, Call Me for by Your Name, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread. And but Blade Runner wasn't even put up there, but it should have. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so. I think that uh, this year that the, this year's version of that sort of idea is probably between Roma and Green Book. Yeah, which I have not seen Green Book yet. When I seeing that movie to me right now is like going to the DMV. <laughs> it's sure. not something that I really want to do, but I know that I have to eventually. <laughs> and I, to give you credit, I mean, yes, it's definitely marketed that way, and it, it, you know, like we talked about a little bit last time, it's got some controversy around it um honestly i i you know as mahershala talked about vigo's use of the n-word um that was not good but at the same time like clearly understandable in the context of what was going on um maybe not so much on the screenwriter that you told me about who yeah did some kind of anti-semitism thing yeah I that's guess. what i heard but i mean beyond even beyond like that stuff is a lot but even beyond that, it's just it's just the kind of movie that just uh, I uh, does not exciting ish. It does not excite me at all. Sure, it just seems really boring, and it's just like, are we ever gonna get past these, you know, feel good, sappy? I guess you could say pandering movies. 
Sure, it definitely feels built for something like this, yeah. like the Oscars itself. Yeah, especially like, <clears throat> I, I hear it described as a white savior movie a lot, and that's definitely something that I would like to see, uh, you know, Hollywood maybe get past, especially now. <laughs> sure. Well, we won't know until we see it, so. Yeah. Then, uh, But yes, I think, uh, I think those are, I agree with Joey, with Green Book and Roma being the kind of the front runners i think a star born is has a pretty good chance too um, that's it's uh it's weird because that was the one that everyone <clears> thought <throat> oh yeah that's just going to be the one that takes everything but sure that, it definitely did not really go that way no i think it's going to win a lot of other categories though sure um but anyway so you want to move on to a, a much happier and much yeah. more fun uh, award ceremony that happens the night before yeah, it's kind of the anti-Oscars, if you if you will. <laughs> and uh, what we're talking about is actually the 2019 Independent Spirits Awards. Uh, and this has a bunch of the best year's uh, independent films and a lot of the films that we like talking about and the ones that we really enjoy the most. If yeah. you remember us talking about our top ten, a lot of these movies that we are going to talk about are on those top ten lists. Yeah. Even like the really, the really small stuff too. Yeah. So, so what we've d kind of decided to do instead of going through like the Oscars really, you know, like in depth, we wanted to go in depth with each of these categories. I think yeah. for their main topic, right? Yeah. So you want to kick off the first uh, award? We're gonna go backwards here. Okay. All right. So the first. The first category we have here is the Truer Than Fiction Award. I believe it was a, it's a documentary made for like a, a lower budget than normal. I'm okay. not sure exactly what the uh, the, the whole, criteria uh, for that. Yeah, but it's like a it's a small documentary, and the nominees are for Alexandria Bombach for On Her Shoulders. Bing Lu for Minding the Gap, and Ramel Moss for Hale County this morning, this evening. All right, so what we've just kind of decided to do, we've already kind of wrote down our picks, and we've also wrote down what we think will win. Uh, well, I guess, sorry, what we want to win, and then what we think will win. Now, I don't, you didn't, did you watch this last year? I didn't or watch it. Watch it? Okay. No. So I, I really don't know exactly how they vote particularly in this award uh, ceremony. Uh, it's pretty easy to predict Oscars, a little, a little bit easier to kind of understand where the audience is yeah. and kind of know where they're going to go. Yeah. But for this, I have not seen any of these documentaries. I know you've seen at least one of them. Right, I've seen uh, one. I've heard of another one, which I uh, really want to see, but I have not gotten a chance to yet. But my my bet is on Mighting the Gap. Yeah, I... Uh... I love Mining the Gap, which I talked about a little bit in our last episode. Um, but uh, I believe that it, it has a very good chance of winning. But also, uh, Hale County this morning, this evening, has gotten quite a bit of traction from uh, from critics. It's a very small movie. It's a uh, it's a very simple movie too. It's basically like about this, you know, this small sort of. I don't know if I, it's a small town or just like this area in like rural, in the rural south, mm -hmm. where it's you know a predominantly black community, and it's basically just showing just a full twenty-four hour span oh, okay. of just this community and how they, how the people there just kind of live their lives, and uh, apparently it's like super experimental, and it does, and uh, the director Ramel Moss does some really interesting and cool observing of these subjects so it's definitely the kind of thing that i'm i'm super interested in i just uh i don't think it's available to rent on any vod service yet so i haven't really had the chance to see it and i don't think it will un get a, a release in theaters here unfortunately yeah that's the unfortunate thing about probably you're gonna hear us probably multiple times say that because um yeah. there's a lot of these movies you're going to be talking about weren't really wide released or are they available on specific um, networks like Hulu or HBO and or Netflix which is interesting and cool um, for definitely for people who have access to those things but seems very limited um, when obviously you know I, I prefer the more traditional 
kind of going to the theater to watch these things, but I know that's we're we're in the minority there. No, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would say a minority. <clears throat> Maybe not for this award ceremony. Yeah, I don't know if I would say <clears throat> that we're in the. I, I know people still enjoy going to the theaters. Yeah. But anyway, so we're thinking Mind in the Gap probably for that one. Yeah, that's uh. I would be really, really excited to see that uh, win something because I think the winner of that award also gets a grant. Oh, that excellent! Could go towards a new the project. New, that's amazing. Yeah, and I would love to see Bing Liu do something else. Uh, so yeah, that would be very exciting. Well, that was the Truer Than Fiction Award. Now we're moving to Someone to Watch Award, and the nominees for that are Alex Morado for Socrates, Iona. Uh, Iraku, Iraku. I I always I'm gonna mispronounce all these names for Lemonade, Jeremiah Zagger for We the Animals. Now this is a category where once again I have not seen any of the films. Uh, I own We the Animals, and I know Joey just recently saw it, so I guess my money is on We the Animals. Mm -hmm. I suppose since that's kind of the one that I we're putting money up on these. Someone to watch. <laughs> we putting money on these. This one. All right. We're well, back. I mean, the tables have turned. I guess that uh, that we're gambling with these independent spirit awards. Yeah, these these first kind of couple awards were kind of going in blind, um, but we're we're gonna get better because the the last couple of awards we've seen pretty much every film. So, but anyway, um, what do you think? Someone to watch award is gonna go to. Uh, I also, I mean, again, it's the one movie I've seen of these three. And I, I think it will win, but uh, I believe Jeremiah Zagar will win for We the Animals. Uh, it's a really great uh, coming-of-age film about a family, the kind of family that you don't really see portrayed on screen very often, or at least not with the delicacy and imagination that he brings to it. Uh, this film was also nominated for several other categories. Yeah, we'll definitely be talking about it a little bit so more. I believe that because of that, I think uh, Film Independent believes in in We the Animals a lot, and I think they they want they have uh, they have their winner in mind. I think it will be Jeremiah Zagar for that. All right, so let's talk about something we know a little bit more about, at least a, a few more films, um, to the best international film. So for South Korea, we have Burning. For the United Kingdom, we have The Favorite. For Italy, we have Happy as Lazaro. For Mexico, we have Roma. And for Japan, we have Shoplifters. Now, both Joey and I have seen uh, two, and he's seen three, of these movies. And we're about to see Burning ourselves, because it's about to hit theaters for us here. It's about to scorch the theaters. Oh, here I'm getting... Oh. Here we go. Give him a minute. <laughs> That's a little zinger right there for you. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, jeez. No one else enjoys that more than us. No, I, I honestly think the the audience is probably going to be like, please stop doing this please light whistle. Please put the whistle back. We want, we want this to be in your a, pocket. We want this to be a normal goddamn podcast. Well, guess what? It's not happening. It's not happening. It's going to be slide whistles every goddamn episode. Yeah, it's going to be like five of them. All right, so the best international <laughs> film... All right, unlike the Oscars, I don't exactly know where this is going to go. Um, my money is on Roma, but I don't exactly know. It might honestly go to shoplifters for Corrieta. What do you think? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, this, this ceremony doesn't have the same politics that the Academy Awards do. Um, so it it honestly could go any way. I would say Roma is the film that gets the most traction going into this award season, though. I think it's the most talked about film out of all of these. Um, but you know, like I had said before, uh, Burning was yeah. was kind of a sensation amongst critics and amongst you know the art house community. The favorite is obviously a, a huge movie as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I feel like that would be kind of a strange winner for this category. Uh, if Roma won? For the favorite to win. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, this one, uh, we both kind of talked about it before this, but we were thinking 
we, we why, why isn't Cold War right here for that particular spot? Yeah. That would be the interesting uh, choice for Poland, at least. Because, you know, international film, I guess, is, you know, taking away the foreign kind of aspect of it. But, right. you know, but at the same time, you know, it doesn't feel very removed. Right. Yeah. Because it's not really, we don't have subtitles for that. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. What yeah. do you think? I think it's a toss up between Rome and Shoplifters for that. I would, I would probably say that if I were to, to put money on it, like we are going to. So, oh, you know, we are. Yeah, that's that's. You said earlier you're putting your money on it, so I was like, okay, I guess that's what we're doing here. I guess we're putting a couple of coins down. Get ready to lose it all, baby. <laughs> yeah, I think you're talking to yourself. Fuck you. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> all right, so let's go uh, from there to the best documentary. So we have Hale County this morning, this evening. We have Mining the Gap. We have a Fathers and Sons. We have On Her Shoulders. We have Shirkers. And we have Won't You Be My Neighbor. Um, Joey, what do you think, since you've seen at least three of these, right? Yeah, yes. I've, I've seen I've seen Shirkers and Won't You Be My Neighbor in addition to Minding the Gap. And um, <clears throat> considering that two of these were nominated for The Truth <clears throat> in Fiction, it's possible that whatever winner of that would probably be omitted from potentially winning this. Mm -hmm. But I mean, anything, anything goes if you, if you think about it. Yeah. But Shirkers is a great movie. It's also another Netflix one. Um, it's about this young Taiwanese woman who makes this, this little, uh, esoteric, uh, coming of age movie when she's a teenager. And it's about, uh, it jumps forward like 20 years later and uh, the film is basically lost and it's about <clears throat> kind of her trying to recover that film and kind of make sense of that point in her life. Uh, it's a really great documentary. Well, um, it's another one that people should check out if they haven't seen. Yeah, since you have Netflix, and most probably most of the people who are listening have Netflix. I need to check it out too because I have Netflix as well. Yeah, it's on there. So uh, what are you doing? Um, well, I've only seen one of these documentaries and this documentary was in my top 10 be and I definitely is definitely the most obvious one, but won't you be my neighbor, mm -hmm. uh, for the Fred Rogers documentary, I absolutely loved. And I honestly think it is extremely necessary for this movie to come out this last year because this, uh, with a lot of the things going on in the world today, I think this movie, um, like I said, it needed to happen. And I just, I loved how much this movie made me kind of just retrospectively, you know, kind of understand humanity a little bit, at least one particular person who tried to help other people, mm -hmm. maybe in a way that obviously as I'm an adult is not as a parent, but I think the way this was made, uh, talking about the social issues of the time uh, and all the things he was trying to do, and he was a complicated man, uh, more so than he was portrayed on on screen i thought that this was a, a really great documentary and uh one that you know as somebody who hasn't seen very many documentaries i think joey's seen a lot more documentaries than i have i'm not really that much of an expert on documentaries i think i need to check out more of those those films because it's just something i need to do but won't you be my neighbor um won't you be my neighbor can't talk <laughs> is uh my favorite movie in there so i think that's the one that i want to win but i think it's between that or minding the gap particularly in my eyes but yeah <clears throat> i think won't you be my neighbor is a good choice for that it was definitely kind of a sensation this summer for a documentary for sure it was definitely uh it was a big it was a big deal when it came out and we didn't talk about the Oscar nominees for best documentary, but no, that it, one wasn't on there. I know, which is really strange. It that is. is not on there. And yeah, I, well, actually, let's do a little meta moment. Uh, going back to the Oscars, there's a few things that we kind of alluded to. One of them being obviously "Won't You Be My Neighbor." We also talked about Beale Street not being on yeah. uh, the best picture. Been stuck for best picture, but also Tony Collette for Hereditary. Come on, and Ethan Hawke for First Reformed. And Ethan Hawke for First Reformed. We'll talk about both of them in a second, but yeah, we'll get back to that. But you know, that's insane that they're all those people are not 
in there and those movies aren't in there so anyway yeah and yet you know bohemian rhapsody and vice <laughs> here we are 2019 <laughs> all right so um do you want to go ahead and announce the next one well real quick i want to say it's really cool that suspiria got the honor of the robert altman award um which is basically like a ensemble award for best cast director just uh, collaborative effort yeah best collaboration between like a huge you know, yeah absolutely with, with I mean, everyone Suspiria was just it. phenomenal with uh, that's definitely a movie that was criminally not take yeah it was not really given a, lo- a whole lot of legitimacy especially with the whole uh awards circuit going on now so it's really cool to see it get like <clears throat> just be get this like singular honor yeah it's uh it's a a film that has so much depth to it and has so much so much going on to and like like you said it's this this production with you know you know all of the the women involved Mm -hmm. and luca uh carving the story from this you know story that already existed but like crafting it and making it his own thing yeah. on top of just the amount of just work and effort done by all of the actresses in this, uh, all of the dancers, the choreographers, the makeup artists, just there's editing, like all of this there. It's, it's such a complicated and deep film. And it, yeah. like, I think it's criminally underrated. And I think it's amazing that the Robert Altman award was awarded for them. Yeah. So that's, that's just another thing to be happy about with Good. Uh, with these all right, next award. Next, we have the uh, the John Cassavetes Award, which uh, I believe is a feature that was made for less than less than five hundred thousand dollars, I believe. It's something it's like that. Less of a budget is yeah, more or less the concept. The there. best low budget independent film, and the nominees for that are A Bread Factory, N. L. Septimo Dia, Never Going Back. Socrates and Thunder Road. And uh, you haven't seen any of the films on here yet. No, this is the first category where I'm <laughs> completely blind. So, and I've only seen Thunder Road, which I absolutely loved. And uh, luckily, my friend, my friend Seth, bought it um, digitally on Amazon, and we all watched it as he bought it, and we we're all blown away by it. Um, I, I can't really make any bets since I really haven't seen any of the films, but I, I guess I say Thunder Road. Uh, I was really mm-hmm. blown away by how amazing uh, this director, also actor, and also the person who put all the money into it, who I'm literally blanking on his name. Is it Jim Cummings? Yeah, Jim Cummings, yes. He uh, did all of that for this particular film. and uh, yeah, It's really cool. It's it's a great movie, and I, I would recommend everyone who is listening to check that film out, and, yeah. and Joey. I need to hop on it. So, yeah, we don't really know who's going to the Cassavetes Award, but... Yeah, it's uh, it's just another thing that's really cool that that category exists. I I don't... I think it was the Rising Star Award as the winner also gets a, a grant. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right, you want to go to the next thing? Yeah. All right, so for best editing... We have Joe Beanie for You Were Never Really Here, Kiko Deguchi, Brian A. Cates, Jeremiah Zagar for We the Animals, Luke Dunkley, Nick Fenton, Chris Gill, and Julian Hart for American Animals, two movies with animals in the <laughs> so title. Many animals. And Fabini, Alex Hall, and Gary Levy for The Tale, and Nick Huey for Mid 90s. <laughs> Midnight, uh, okay, so best editing. So, this is a uh, category over. I've only seen three of the the five films. I think you've seen all of them. Uh, I have not seen American Animals. Okay, I have seen American Animals, and uh, and all, all these movies, the the ones I I've seen, deservingly so, have are definitely here for for great things. Um, now, the movies that I think uh, the one that I want to win personally is. You were never really here, Joe Beanie, for this. Yeah. Um, the editing in this movie were just, it was just to the point and blunt. It hit me yeah. over the head and was just phenomenal. Yeah. That, I don't think that movie gets enough credit for the fact that it is only, it's like less than 90 minutes long, but it just feels like so concise and so, just so tightly put together. And you've, 
it somehow is able to, even with just a, such a short amount of time, it's still able to expand on the character of Joe to the point where you understand him and you know uh, what he's about and the things that he's gone through in his life. So, yeah, I think that's definitely my choice, who I would most want to see win for this category as well. The other movie that I'm thinking about is Mid-90s. Mm -hmm. um, Nick uh, Hoy, or however you say his last name. <laughs> I don't um, know why, I just <laughs> thought that it was Huey. Huey. <laughs> uh, Nick Huey, you know, because skateboarding, right? You know, Jonah Hill, I think, obviously, this isn't about him, but the, he directed this film with... Uh, I honestly really liked the directions that all of uh, the editing took with this movie in particular, and I thought there was a lot of really interesting choices, and I really loved the ending of the movie and how it set how it set up, you know, kind of just what we all did in the '90s, kind of with our home video mm -hmm. kind of aspect to it. I thought that was really interesting and cool, so I just wanted to mention that mm -hmm. that I really enjoyed that aspect. Anything else about that? Uh, I don't think so. All right. Next, we're going to move on to best cinematography. This is a stacked category. It's a, <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty crazy category. It's a good one. So we have Ashley Connor for Madeline's Madeline. We have Diego, Diego Garcia for Wildlife. We have Benjamin Loeb for Mandy. We have Say Sayambu Mukti Pram for Suspiria. And we have Zach Mulligan for We the Animals. And like Joey was said, he has seen almost he's seen all of these movies. Yeah, I've seen them all. Um, They're all gorgeous. I've only seen two of these movies, and I I'm guessing about one of them. Yeah. The one I want to win. I think I had Mandy or Suspiria there for the ones I want to win. Obviously, I have not seen Mandy, but I think that's the one that I. I honestly believe we'll win for that particular category. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I talked about Mandy a lot last episode, but it is a really like singular vision. Um, I haven't really seen a movie that like really people use mind bending a lot to describe. It's overused. Yeah, but I would, I'd say that it is like a really it's worthy of that uh, attribute because like it. There are many times where you're watching Mandy and it's just, uh, am I seeing what I'm really seeing right <laughs> now? <laughs> but, um, yeah, all of these are so beautifully shot. Um, I, yeah, I can't really, like, imagine a better, better choices for this. Um, Diego Garcia, Wildlife is even though it's kind of, you know, it's on a smaller scale, it kind yeah, of absolutely. tells a simpler story, but it still it does just, so much with it. It's and really engulfing. Yeah. That's it, the, the feeling I had every time I right. watched it, just every, a lot, lots of the shots in yeah. this film just like, felt like it overwhelmed me. The shot where, you know, um, the kid, I forgot his name, but where he's overlooking the fire after they drive out there and yeah. the camera just slowly. Trying to find his dad. Yeah, it just slowly builds up to up this mountain, and you see the flames start to show up. It's like otherworldly. You, know, you just uh, you can't imagine in being over in in that area actually experiencing something like that. And I know you're from California, right? I mean, uh, it, it takes place in my, in uh, Montana. Uh, but yes, but you know that that whole that whole area has wildfires oh, okay. a lot i see the, what you're saying yeah. yeah i was getting at that like you know it, it felt like you were there right yeah. and it just felt yeah. you know massive and out of like just dangerous and you couldn't it's chaotic and you couldn't deal with it. it's mother nature yeah. you can't do anything about it right so it's it a beautiful shot so yeah i, I think, yeah oh sorry go ahead i'm gonna say we're both on mandy i guess uh <laughs> i i mean like i continue to say i would love to see any of these any of these uh, DPs win. Um, it's really great that Madeline's Madeline is also on here. That's something that I kind of wish was nominated for more things, but I can't really complain too much because everything else is so great. Um, I think I would most want to see Soyan Bu Muktik Prom win for Suspiria. Yeah, that movie was just it just so enticing. Yeah. Uh, and just it sucked you in, it seduced you. Yeah. And it's one of those movies that just. It seduced you, and then it 
<laughs> fucking tears your head off. Yeah, exactly. It's a it is a, it's a slow burn of a of a yeah. It, it's literally a boa constrictor just tightening up. Yeah. It's like it's like oh it's just it's nice it's okay th- okay this is getting tighter okay what's going to happen here and then <laughs> boom basically all that we, all that really needs to be said is that Suspiria fucks it fucks hard it fucks hard it fucks hard jeez yeah there's a lot of just really good picks here and I honestly cannot wait to see Mandy from what you've said Madeline's Madeline which you've mo- mentioned multiple times to me and then I will finally watch We the Animals I'll probably watch it this week since we've talked about it for so much yeah definitely you know yeah. so let's move on from there to best first screenplay so mm-hmm. for that we have Bo Burnham for 8th grade we have Christina Coey or Co probably for Nancy Corey Finley for Thoroughbreds Jennifer Fox for The Tale Quinn Shepard, who is the writer and story by, and then Lori Shepard, who is the story by for Blame. Now, we've only seen two of these movies. I have seen. I've seen three. Okay, you've seen. You've seen the tale. Yeah. I have not. Um, but to me, this one is fairly obvious mm-hmm. uh, for the best first screenplay. Yeah. And to me, that's Bo Burnham for Eighth Grade. Yeah, I agree. And Bo Burnham, you know, he started up on YouTube and. You know, you get something like eighth grade that's really special. Yeah. Um, because it's you know we mentioned it last time in my honorable mentions. I wanted to talk about it, but it's just it was such a heartfelt and real movie, and yeah. I think he did a really great job here with this screenplay. Yeah, uh, this movie really took took all of us by surprise. I think. Uh, and just the level of depth that it went for and that it succeeded in achieving. And, uh, yeah, I think for that reason, I think it is, I think it is pretty safe to say that he's got this one, but, uh, I think Thoroughbreds is a really great debut film for Corey Finley. I'm really excited to see what else he makes. It's a very fun, very fun movie that has very stamps of Kubrick on it and, you know, has just really fun directions. Mm-hmm. for a lot of the things going on with it yeah. it's a really short film too right great performances it's got a great tone to it as well uh jennifer fox the tale is a very great movie as well i don't know how much are you aware of like what it what that what it is i'm not okay basically it's kind of an autobiographical ta- tale <laughs> oh, about that's a zinger yeah that's it's a about a whistle <laughs> Do you don't, don't get it out <laughs> okay i won't not yet um it's an autograph uh, fucking christ <laughs> uh, it's an autobiographical um story about jennifer fox who's like a uh who's like a documentary filmmaker and it basically is about her herself laura dern plays her in the film and uh basically about her coming to terms with something traumatic that happened in her childhood and sort of trying to make sense of it and confront it in her present life. And uh, it's really riveting. It's a really, it's an extraordinarily brave film as well. And um, I think that would honestly give her a very realistic um, push in potentially winning this award. But I do believe that because of eighth grade, having a a lot more exposure, I think, um, I think Bo Burnham definitely has it. But if Jennifer ended up winning, that would be really exciting, too. Well, I'm definitely excited to, to watch all these films, and I honestly want to see Blame and Nancy as well. Yeah, yeah. So Nancy's <clears throat> got Andrea Riseborough in it. Ooh. She plays uh, Mandy. <laughs> so do you want to introduce the next category? Yeah, okay. We got Best Screenplay here, and the nominees are Richard Glazer, Rebecca Lenkowitz, and Wash Westmoreland for Colette. Then we have Nicole Holoff Center and Jeff Witte for Can You Ever Forgive Me? Tamara Jenkins for Private Life, Boots Riley for Sorry to Bother You, and Paul Schrader for First Reformed. So what are your thoughts on this screenplay here? Uh, again, really great. Uh, but fairly obvious. Least, well, I don't know. Uh, for me it is, but... Yeah. I'm also I'm also a little bit biased. I think I would I would be very com- I would be very comfortable in predicting that Paul Schrader will win, which yes. 
I think is a great choice, of course, which I will say I will give it to the Academy. I'm glad that he was nominated. For, yeah, at least that's the screenplay. only thing that first Re- first reform was nominated at least in the Oscars, yeah. which is mean, great. At least it, it got something. Yes, because it, it, des- it deserves so much. Yeah, it's pretty awful that Ethan Hawke isn't on there, but uh, I mean, it's good that that Paul Schrader made it made it in that category, which I believe I don't even. I don't know if he had been nominated for that before in the past either. Really? For I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Any of the films he's done before prior to that? I don't think so. That's a that's a criminally underrated thing, an unfortunate. I mean. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I mean, I I would say that's a safe bet is picking Paul Schrader right. for First Reformed. I mean, obviously that's my pick and the one who I want to win. Yeah. Um, just personally, from my 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 favorite kind of just. I was just so fascinated by that story. Um, But there's a couple of other things that I've seen in this uh, lineup that I thought were really great. We both saw Can You Ever Forgive Me? Yes. Which we thought was really fun. Yeah, that was a great movie. Um, I wouldn't say fun is probably the best word to say it. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because it's it's a depressing movie that feels... Lighthearted. Yeah, it feels lighthearted, but it's about, you know, it's about this this woman who's doing some really awful things and dealing with loneliness in a very real way. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's really brilliantly written and beautifully acted too. And I think the other person to kind of watch for this is Brutes Riley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with, uh, sorry to bother you is amazing. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I, yeah, go on, Joey. Yeah. Uh, Boots Riley, this is his first, I believe this is his debut. It's his directorial debut, I'm pretty sure. He's just been doing music videos and shorts, right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, Sorry to Bother You is a wild ride. Um, it's one of the craziest movies of the year, which I'm sure many people have said. Um, it's really great that he is getting uh, some recognition for for that I would be super on board with him winning, um, even though you know, First Reformed I think is a better film. Uh, I think it's just really great that he's a part of yeah. the conversation, as well as uh, Tamara Jenkins' Private Life is wonderful as well. Uh, there were just so many great movies last year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, unlike what we were talking about earlier with the Oscars, you know, we're really happy to be talking about all the movies that we're mentioning here because these are the movies that you know, we were blown away by, you know, there was some good ones in the Oscars too, but this is where, you know, the mainstay is where a lot of the, the big ones that we really liked are here. The most important ones. Yes. Definitely for, for just cinema in general. Yeah. Um, so let's just move on from there to a really interesting battle here. Um, Battle Royale. Battle Royale between the best supporting male. So for that, we have Raul Castillo for We the Animals. We have Adam Driver for Black Klansman. We have Richard E. Grant for Can You Ever Forgive Me? We have Josh Hamilton for Eighth Grade. And we have John David Washington for Monsters and Men. Oh. I am putting my money on oh. John David Washington. Careful. Don't be talking about money. I'm going to think you're serious. I'm putting some coins down on this guy. <laughs> John David Washington, yes, he is uh, really great in Black Klansman, but he's not nominated for that in this mm-hmm. particular uh, s- scenario. So this is the only place where he's at. Yeah. And I actually really loved Monsters and Men. We watched it together, actually. Yeah, great movie. And I thought he did phenomenal in that movie uh, in a in a very difficult position, too. Yeah, that... I. Yeah, that had to have been a really, really tough, uh, tough role to to take on. But he, he's this was definitely a, a huge year for him, and I'm yeah, really, really he's in three movies. Yeah, I'm really excited to see where his career goes from here because uh, in everything that I saw him in, he really stood out. He's uh, making a name for himself, yeah. uh, other than just being Denzel's son, which is yeah. it's great. And, and I didn't even know that. Until, I didn't even know that either. Yeah, until, until this, a little bit later on. Yeah, which is just fantastic. Yeah. But um, there's other other people in here that I thought were just phenomenal. Yeah. I, um, love, I loved Richard's performance, uh, Jack Hawk forever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Um, I think I would be most excited to see Adam Driver win for yeah, Black Klansman. He's, he's the fun 
uh, he, he's the fun counterpart to John David Washington in Black Klansman. Right. Yeah. And is definitely that, that counterpart that is necessary. Yeah. I, th- I think this is my favorite performance of his. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's just, he's so great here. And, uh, it's also really cool that Josh Hamilton is in there for eighth grade. He's definitely, I would say... He's the reason that made me cry in that movie. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's the emotional center of that film. Um, he really... Uh, he and Kayla's kind of relationship was just, like, really... It felt very honest and uh, very refreshing to see portrayed that way. And uh, a lot of that was because of him and what he brought to the role. Yeah, it kind of feels like how I'm going to be as a dad if I ever become a dad, and that's yeah. probably going to be me, the awkward one who's making just yeah. dumb jokes all the time. <laughs> it was just really nice to see, like, a parent that wasn't just, like, you know, just mad. Like, it could you could have easily seen, like, that movie just made one instead of, you know, Josh Hamilton just trying to be, you know, understanding and show some compassion to Kayla. It could just, you know, be sort of dismissive. Yeah, and honestly, I... I you know, when I was to get a kind of get break a little bit of the mold, when I watched the trailers for eighth grade, I was excited, but I also had, um, you know, second guesses. Uh-huh. And when I had those second guesses, it's because of the subject material um, and the current time period. I'm not the biggest fan of the generation below me, as most people mm. say that every single time. Going on curmudgeon mode. Yeah, the, my, <laughs> here's my curmudgeon mode. When I say that, I mean the technology has really sculpted. Um, a lot of the the fads that even we went through, you know, during that age. Um, but, you know, obviously more now it seems to be a little bit more obnoxious, at least probably in our eyes, because, you know, that's not what we did when we were younger. But with that being said, uh, I had that curmudgeon mode moment when I was watching the trailer. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this because it's definitely going to be really awkward and really hard to watch because it's stuff that makes me cringe but at the end of the day, though, I think Josh Hamilton, like we were saying, is that center of, you know, bringing that together and yeah. making it cohesive for me and enjoyable and, and all of that, even though, you know, I know what the subject material is. Yeah. What a good fucking dad. <laughs> what a good dad. That's what you should be. That's the dad you should be. <laughs> all right. Do you want to go? Oh. To... Before we do that, oh. uh, Raul Castillo for We the Animals is also really great. I'm happy to see him on there. Uh, he's uh, he's not the best dad, but he's also a dad. <laughs> he's not the best dad. <laughs> unlike <laughs> unlike uh, Josh. Yeah, you'll you'll understand what I mean when you see that. <clears throat> All right, so let's go on to the next okay. one. Best supporting female. We have Kaylee Carter for Private Life, Tin Daly for Bread Factory, Regina King for If Beale Street Could Talk, Thompson Harcourt McKenzie for Leave No Trace, and Jay Smith Cameron for Nancy. So this is one where you've seen three of the movies, right? Uh, I've seen three, yeah. Yes. So you've seen Private Life, Beale Street, and Leave No Trace. Right. Yeah. I've only seen Beale Street and Leave No Trace, but I really think it's between those two. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Um, speaking of, you know, good parents, you know, Regina King. She's. It's just phenomenal. She's the mama. She is the the mama bear in this movie, and she goes all the way to goddamn Puerto Rico. She goes to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico to, you know, we're not going to get into the the story, but, like, she just, she goes above and beyond uh, what it means to be a mother. And also there's just multiple moments where you're, like, like, you start clapping because you're just so happy that she made the right decision. Yeah, it's just, again, it's just a really refreshing take on that parental role. It's not what you're used to seeing in this sort of, you know, heavy dramatic setting it's just really really nice to see like a family that genuinely loves each other yeah and will stick up for each other that's what i love about that movie love yeah. uh, <laughs> and then thomason hardcourt mckenzie for leave no trace i yeah. just recently saw this yeah she is so good in this and i agree with joey on this because i mean joey you saw it way earlier in the year right yeah i saw it i believe back in maybe april april or may april April or hey, April or hey. But I finally watched it a couple weeks ago. I, I loved Ben Foster in it, and I also yes. loved, I loved just I you know she played such a great daughter mm-hmm. um, to this broken man, 
Yeah, and which, uh, I don't think he he also deserves some credit too. But absolutely, we can, we can get into that again later. But with with Thomason, her performance, I, I was just, you know, I was wondering where she would go the yeah. whole time, the yeah. entire time I was watching. Is like, what direction is this? Where are we going with this? Yeah, like, what are you? What are you gonna do yeah. with the situation that you're thrust in? And that's that's something that really just interested me and. You know, she just knocked it out of the park. I don't really know yeah. anything else she's been in. Do you? I don't think so. But, uh, yeah, her performance just feels so naturalistic. Uh, yeah, uh, you just you buy into everything that she does. And uh, you really, really feel for her sort of dilemma about, you know, trying to find a place in a world that her father does not want to be a part of and wants to protect her from, basically. And she kind of learns that it might sort of just be like an illusion that he has, you know. Yeah, it's just it's 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 such a complex movie for such a simple premise, right? And and the you know the decision that she's having to make is a really deep one. Yeah, and it's really heartbreaking to kind of just watch it unfold, just yeah. in whatever direction it goes. Yep. Anyway, that's a great movie. <clears throat> Anything Should, else to uh, say about that? Uh, I believe that Regina King will win. I do too. For that. Honestly, I think she will win that as well. She's. I think she's the Oscar front runner as well, which is exciting. And uh, she's also uh, in my favorite TV show of all time, The Leftovers. She hops in on uh, in uh, season two, and she's amazing in that as well. So yeah, I love Regina. Oh, King. Damn, I need to watch that show. I have only seen the first season, so <sighs> can it keep going. So let's move on from there to the best male lead. So we have John Cho for Searching, David Diggs for Blind Spotting, Ethan Hawke for First Reformed, Christian Malheros for Socrates, and Joaquin Phoenix for You Were Never Really Here. Now this one I know is uh, is a battle for for Joey. Yeah. And two less m- less of so for me, but yeah, uh, there's two really really strong performances here two of like my absolute favorite performances from and a lead actor this favorite year. Favorite actors too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Joaquin Phoenix and You Were Never Really Here, obviously. I've talked about that film a lot. Uh is my favorite film of last year. He's one of my favorite actors. And uh, I think he is absolutely incredible in that. His presence is uh yeah, something that's very different for him and also just feels like so strong but ethan hawk with first reformed i think he did something completely new for himself as well but even more so uh i don't really recall a time where he really like tackled something like this this meaningful you know yeah we we obviously love him and the stuff that he's done with richard link later where he's kind of naturalistic and yeah where he's just he's kind of playing himself like honestly yeah, he's essentially playing like a version of himself somebody yeah. who's just really passionate and loves to you know enjoy loves, life. like those long conversations about things that matter but here here he really really digs deep in a way that i don't really think we've seen from him before and uh he's just uh absolutely incredible and uh so many layers to this this character yeah and he it just fleshes out i mean straight from the very very you know beginning where he's you know having these thoughts writing them down in his journal and narrating to us Mm -hmm. having these these questions in his head he's starting to think rethink some things we don't exactly know you know the background until we obviously go a little bit deeper into the story but it's just there's such i don't really know how to explain it because i remember the first time uh, me watching this i was just enthralled by his performance and his his character and like wondering what he would do Mm -hmm. next because there are multiple points in this film where he could go one direction or the other and it just it, it threw me for you know a oh just threw me for a loop, you know? Uh, that's what a loop sounds like. <laughs> that's what a loop sounds like. But I I honestly think that I agree with, with Joey that the, I think it's between those two um, people. Even though those are, yes, our favorite people, 
but it, people have been talking about both of these these performances like uh, nonstop. So I honestly think Ethan Hawke has this particularly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But let's not discount the rest of these people because I mean, John Cho for Searching, what an original movie. Yeah. He uh that that film you could definitely say is on his shoulders and he carries it. Talking about another great dad who's, yeah. you know, looking out for, well, kind of great dad. Yeah. He's, he, uh, he's learning his lessons. On paper, he's a great dad. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But he, yeah, he, he gives that love, he, he gives that performance just like so much humanity, uh, and so much depth as well. Because like you said, on like, you know, we kind of pointed out that he is a great, he is like on paper, he's a good dad. He obviously cares, but he's, he's also... So busy yeah. he's also not a perfect human being no and that's that's the that's the, what drives the story obviously yeah. and so that's what's great about it yeah. uh, and then also david diggs um for blind spotting what a phenomenal film that is not talked about enough yeah not at all it was definitely underseen um yeah uh, it's another one that he's sort of at the center of it he has a lot to deal with you would say that you could say that it's a comedy but there's also such like heavy things going on. Also, uh, there's a lot of emotional scenes, and there are a lot of scenes of you know lightheartedness, and uh, you're with him the whole time. Yeah, and he's and he's playing a character that is actually kind of controversial for a film like this. Yeah. And when I say that, I mean in a he's playing the the opposite of the monolithic kind of idea of what it means to be an Mm -hmm. African-American. And that's what's so interesting about his character because his best friend, uh, Raphael... Raphael Casal. Casal, that's the actor's name. Um, Who's also great. Yeah, who's not seen here, so it's good to talk about him. But he is the white character who plays the stereotypical, kind of like what I was saying, the opposite. They're playing opposite of each other, at least in the the stereotypes that they're in. And so it, it seems... To be, you know, a multi-layered film about their relationship, and I just I thought it was brilliant, and you know the way it was told, um, mm-hmm. like like Joey was saying, you're with David the whole time, uh, yeah. trying to see what he's just he's just trying to you know live his life, and he's just trying as hard as he can to just get to get by, yeah, with the really shitty circumstances that he has been dealt. Yep, with his best friend. So yeah. it's. I mean, this this is a good. This is good cast. So great. That's a, that's one of my favorite uh, categories so far. Absolutely. Um, you want to say anything else about that? Uh, let's move on. All right. Next, we're going to best female lead. The best female lead. We have Glenn Close, the wife, Tony Collette, Hereditary, Elsie Fisher for Eighth Grade. Regina Hall, Support the Girls, Helena Howard, Madeline's Madeline, Carrie Mulligan, The Wildlife. Now this one is such a great category here, and it looks like we have one more female than we have males. Yeah, they uh, they did something cool, and uh, they <clears throat> extended it out just to, to get everyone in. Yeah, which is really great. Yeah. Um, so, coming back to Tony Collette. Um, this is my favorite pick, and this is the pick that I think should win. But yeah, I was just blown away um, by her performance, and it, like I was saying a little bit in that meta moment we had about the Oscars, how in the hell did she not fucking make it? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, preposterous. It's uh, <laughs> had to bust yeah. that one out. Here uh, it goes. Ooh. Look out. <laughs> mm. Here's another uh, slide whistle moment for. For you, but I mean the the, the academies First are known name for not. Mister. Last name <laughs> Whistle. Mister Whistle. Mister Whistle does not like science fiction or horror in my Oscars, but we're not there. We're at the, the amazing Independent Spirits Awards instead. So uh, Tony Collette was just it. This movie was on her her back. Just I mean, obviously all the performances in this movie were just yeah. golden, but. She just blew everyone out of the way. Yeah. Uh, she is... Uh, she's terrifying in this movie. And... Uh, what you have to see her go through is just so awful. But she makes you feel all of that with her. 
Uh, she's part of the reason why the film is so immersive in the first place. Um, yeah, uh, she she's unbelievable in it, and uh, it's uh, it's criminal that she didn't really get a whole lot more recognition for that. Um, besides her, the other person that I had in my in my head was Elsie Fisher for eighth grade. Mm-hmm. I really liked her. Obviously, this is her first movie, and she. You know, she she played a role um, because, you know, that's what Bo was looking for was what we are like in eighth grade. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how much is that that was like actual her or mm-hmm. how much of that was actually acted. So, but uh, regardless, her performance was great. Yeah. No and, matter what, she, yeah, she, uh, she's, she does it perfectly. She accomplishes exactly uh, what the what the film sets out to do. Yeah. So, uh, any other people you want to talk about? Any other? Women? There are a lot, actually. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a couple I want to point out specifically, but I do have some very strong feelings. Uh, Regina Hall and support the girls is wonderful. Uh, I love that movie very much. Uh, I mentioned I mentioned it last episode and talked about it quite a bit, but yeah, her. She's always been a great actress. Uh, she doesn't really get a whole lot of credit. She doesn't really get the lead in much. But when she does shine, she really does. Or when she gets the chance to shine, she really does shine in just about anything. And uh, she finally gets like the, a really, really great role here that uh, more people need to see this movie. I'm serious. <laughs> Uh, they need to understand, like... Put money on it? Yeah, I'll put, like, like $6 on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's big bucks. Yeah. Shoot. Fat stacks. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, more people need to see Support the Girls so that they will understand what I mean by that. Because I bet that you will come away thinking, like, yeah, Regina Hall is, is, uh, is great. And I also want to point out Helena Howard for Madeline's Madeline. Again, that's another role. It's a very unorthodox sort of film that she is just kind of thrust into. And the whole thing is on her shoulders once again. But she, this is, I believe this is her first film role. Um, And uh, she is just absolutely mesmerizing and um unforgettable in that so and also carrie mulligan is great in wildlife as well she's always been great and uh she pulls off a very complicated performance in that as well yeah i would agree so yeah it's just uh the the the, for all these categories i i understand why they added an extra nominee for that because there really were so many great performances this year and uh so many great female performances this year and Absolutely. It, yeah it's really awesome that you know so many women got to to shine the way that they did yeah i am really excited to see where that goes and like joey said i need to see a lot of these films so uh i need to support the girls and madeline's madeline soon and i also need to see the wife for going close all right so Now we're going to move on to best first feature. So this is a feature film that is the first time director uh, has. So so we have Ari Aster for Hereditary. Well, actually, no. Hold on. (laughs) Let me. Okay, it's first best first feature. So it's it's the first feature from this director. Usually, it's not about the director. It's about the the film itself. Hereditary. We have Sorry to Bother You. We have The Tale. We have We the Animals, and we have Wildlife. So. With this all being said, I was kind of blown away by Hereditary, kind of just moving on with Tony mm-hmm. Collette. Uh, this Ari Aster, I, I, after watching Hereditary, went back and I watched a lot of his short films, and I could see uh, the workings of how amazing his camera work was and and how you know unsettling all of his work is. Yeah. And I honestly cannot wait for the next thing he does uh, Mm -hmm. after this because this movie was, in my opinion, one of the best horror movies I've seen in the last 20 years. 
uh, this along with The Witch are like two of the films that I just I absolutely adore and it's this movie's it feels like it's for me and my type of horror and mm-hmm. so that's why I love Hereditary so much and I honestly think Ari Aster is just going to go from here all the way just, just keep going up so. yeah he already has a new film coming out next year too which uh, is very exciting but uh yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Um, Hereditary was was pretty major this year, and uh, I I think that it would it would be the uh, the ideal choice for this category. Even though I've seen all of these films, and I think all of them are worthy of being considered, but I think that uh, I think that one is the the one that reigns supreme. Yeah, and talking about the other films um i really am glad that paul dano has wildlife here Mm -hmm. um this is a guy who i've always enjoyed his work but i always thought he was just one of the weirdest fellows ever (laughs) like just he does all these weird things and so it's just interesting to see him take uh, a story like wildlife and honestly i don't know how much of Paul Dano is involved in this because I kind of feel like it has a little bit to do with his life. Mm-hmm. Now I don't, I can't hundred percent tell you that obviously, sure, sure. but you know, I feel like, you know, I think directors probably put a little bit of themselves in their films, of course. obviously. And this is kind of like with Jonah Hill doing with mid nineties. I could, I could tell you that Jonah probably had uh, some phases with, you know, with this particular, you know, that film that he's interested in and skateboarding. So I have a feeling that in wildlife, uh, there's been probably moments of, of Paul Dano's life that had similar aspects of it, but I don't, I can't tell you anyway, I'm just prospecting now, so I shouldn't be doing that, but I really enjoyed Paul Dano's, um, direction here. And I, I'm really excited to see him go from acting and he's always been a phenomenal actor, Mm -hmm. um, to a director. Yeah. Um, yeah, wildlife. It was really thrilling to see such a so like such a confidently made film from him. Who's he's an actor that I've respected and really enjoyed for a long time. Uh, I saw There Will Be Blood for the first time, like way back in like I think it's been over ten years now, and uh, that movie changed my life for sure. That's definitely one that opened me up to to the way that I see film now. It's and, actually, uh, it was my introduction to Joey, actually. Oh, talking yeah. about There Will Be Blood. But yeah, that's that's true. another story for that's another time. That's another story for another day. We. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Wildlife was uh, was really exciting to see. Um, he, he really knocked it out of the park with that. Just uh, not only just in terms of style, but in terms of complexity. Um, he really crafted... Uh, this really layered, really, really brilliant um, human drama there. So, you want to mention anything else, or do you want to just head to the last two? Let's hit it up. <laughs> All right. I don't know what that even means, but we'll go. <clears throat> All right. Well, we got the last two uh, categories here. We have best director, so we have Deborah Granick for Leave No Trace, Barry Jenkins for If Bill Street Could Talk. Tamara Jenkins for Private Life. We have Lynn Ramsey for You Are Never Really Here. And we have Paul Schrader for First Reformed. Now, <clears throat> I think this is going to go similar to how we felt with our best actors. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this particularly one is uh, between You Are Never Really Here and First Reformed, personally, with Lynn Ramsey and Paul Schrader. Okay. Um I think that Paul Schrader deserves this particular uh, role. Obviously, I, I am a little biased, but uh, there's all um, really great um, direction here uh, for a film that I've never seen before, ever, in my life, um, and something that really just floored me. But um, you were never really here. Also, another film that, like you know, like I've said multiple times, just hit me with a hammer. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And just did not like I, you know. Hashtag bring the hammer. Bring, hashtag bring the hammer. <laughs> it brought the hammer. Uh, it saved uh, Wakanda for for a second, and then <laughs> Avengers. You know something happened, and then you know, damn it, Thor should have brought oh, more man. hammers. But uh, <laughs> another person to talk about, I think here is Barry Jenkins for If Beale Street Could Talk. Yeah, I think that he has a pretty, he has a fair chance, he has a fair shot at that. I would say. 
Yeah, and this is a movie that, you know, he deserves to be talked about, you know, for, honestly, for Best Picture in, in the Oscars category. But it's just, just, I don't know, this movie, just I, I've seen it twice now, and I loved it even more the second time. And I just, I just love how he crafts this story. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, it's beautifully made. It's just such a beautiful film. Yeah. Also, I want to say about Bill Street, I feel like I'm, I, of course, I'm, I'm very happy about Regina King getting some, some recognition, but the rest of the cast is amazing too. Yeah. And they're not really like Kiki Lane, about. Stephen James, Coleman Domingo, all of them deserve to be nominated as well because yeah, they're all great. But, you know, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. So what do you think about Best Director? I I think a fair... I think it would be between Barry Jenkins and Paul Schrader for me. Um, but, again, it's another one that it's hard to really point out where it could go because, you know, there are just, like, so many different possibilities there you don't really know like what what direction things can swerve to like uh for all we know deborah granick could take it which would be awesome yeah that would be amazing yeah. um just yeah for that film that honestly you know not to play on the words but like kind of felt like it you know came and gone but like made a trace yeah like, but like, you know, the opposite of what it, it is. And it left its trace. He's reaching for it. Everyone look out. Oh, God. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh. Uh, but, you know, I'm thinking more and more I think about it because we're going to go to the next category soon. I'm honestly thinking based on uh, the next category, I'm thinking Barry Jenkins might have this. Yeah. So, all right. Last category? Yep. Want to name it? It's time. All right. Best feature at the Independent Spirit Awards for 2019. We've got Eighth Grade, First Reformed, If Beale Street Could Talk, Leave No Trace, and You Were Never Really Here. These, this is the... Yeah, now, this is a best film list right yeah. here. This it's, is a best yeah. film list. It covers all the bases. All of these films are wonderful. Uh, all of them are important. All of them have something really meaningful at their core. And all of them just, it seems like they're all so new and fresh. Yeah. And that's what I love about each one of these films. Yeah. Um, so, kind of how I was alluding um, with, you know, I'm thinking Best Director Barry Jenkins will win for Beale Street. I'm thinking the opposite for that. I think First Reformed has this one particularly mm -hmm. for best feature. Yeah. I've already talked enough about First Reformed, but, you know, you know my thoughts on it. Yeah. Uh, I I believe, I think it is between First Reformed and Beale Street. It might be one of those situations where one of them could win best director and the other yeah, win best feature or said. vice versa. Um, yeah, I think that Schrader, Schrader could win for screenplay and then win best feature or it could be barry jenkins that does that and then schrader takes best director i'm not really sure but i think those two are the films that will probably dominate a lot of it um at least that's just how it seems mm -hmm. just from at this point in time um uh, where the discourse is is going to me yeah but you know without being said you were never really here. It's my favorite film of the year, and I'd love to see it win, win anything. Yeah, um, uh, it's it's gonna win something, I think. Yeah, it's got to. Yeah, even best editing would be, like, absolutely very exciting. Yeah, I mean, honestly, out of all the, well, even editing on there, those okay. I'm not gonna go in there, but <laughs> I was like, I'm looking at the other ones, like well, it might probably win the best editing. And then I'm like, then I thought about <laughs> Build Street. And I was like, okay, the editing in that's pretty damn good. Yeah. And yeah, it's all over the place, but yeah, it's just, there's a lot of good things here. You know, eighth grade with Bo Burnham's That first... has a good chance too. Yeah. It yeah. really does. And it's just, it's a, it's a film that, you know, all the other films, you know, uh, could be specific for specific people. 
Yeah. But eighth grade is for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's whereas you know first reform you have maybe a, a spiritual religious crisis. You Beale Street could talk. You have uh, the the you know African American the the black crisis. Um, well, not, like not black crisis. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get it. But anyway, we'll leave no trace. You have a, a, a familial crisis that not everyone is akin, akin to. You know, yeah. and with you were never really here. You have a trauma so deep. Uh, and it's this, an internal. It's an internal struggle. So, yeah. but with eighth grade, it's so compelling because everyone was in this fucking spot. Yeah, yeah, it's relatable to just about anybody. So I can definitely see that as something. Yeah, it definitely. All of these have a chance, and the insane thing about it, when it all comes down to it, why I would consider this to be the anti Oscars is because all of these are none of them are nominated for best picture. Yeah, which is insane. At the Oscars this year. And, uh, you know, that kind of goes to show uh, why uh, the Academy Awards, they just got to end. It's yeah. time, baby. <laughs> it's time. It's time. All right. Well, we want to say thank you. It's going to be a, a long episode once again. Thank you for listening to us talk about um, all the things, Oscars, not all of it, but... All the things Independent Spirit Awards, which is a much better award ceremony. Check that out on February twenty third, Saturday. Uh, it'll be on the IFC. Uh, I'm sure there will be other ways to oh, watch it. You can definitely stream it online somehow. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really exciting. Um, it's gonna be the the, the quote unquote true awards ceremony for for the films of twenty eighteen. Um, so yeah, I think, or I can say that we both think that it deserves to be, uh, you know, a little bit well, more well known, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more attention should be given to it. Yeah. I mean, and I, Joe and I talked beforehand, he was the one who actually introduced me to this, this award ceremony and I didn't really know about it. And so it's criminally underrated, I think, since, you know, not enough people I don't think know about it. So definitely check that out. Also, check out the Oscars if you want to have some laughs and, and some gaffes. Yeah, check out Bohemian Rhapsody winning Best Picture, and then <laughs> Brian Singer will be on stage, and uh -oh. everyone will throw tomatoes at him, and <laughs> here we, we'll, here we we'll go. laugh. <laughs> and that's what the whole thing's about. All right, well, this is Nathan. And I am Joseph Townsend. And we are signing off. Good night. <laughs>